This is the Nokia 5.3, and it's actually really hard reviewing a device like this phone. You see, when you usually review a flagship device, you always expect it to do everything so exceptionally well. So the camera has to be excellent, the battery life needs to be excellent, the screen needs to be top-notch, and so on and so forth. But with a phone like the 5.3, which is mainly designed to be as budget-friendly as possible, what kind of compromises are acceptable and what kind of compromises aren't? And this is where you, as a potential user, come in. What matters to you? And does the Nokia 5.3 serve your needs? Let's find out. So let's start with the hardware. Nokia has always produced excellent hardware, and luckily the 5.3 is no different. The phone actually feels more expensive than it actually is, and that's thanks to very clever design. The back of the phone, for example, is made out of plastic. However, due to this matte finish and gradient design, it actually feels and looks like glass. The edges of the phone are also made out of hardened plastic, but they also somehow feel like metal. The phone also feels kind of weighty in the hand, which gives it a premium feel. These design choices not only make sense, but they also make me feel confident that if I was to accidentally drop the phone, nothing bad will really happen to it. If you don't want to take that risk, there is a minimal phone case that actually comes inside the box, so you can use that if you want. Anything else that's quite special about this hardware? Well, other than Nokia's obsession with symmetry, which I actually really appreciate, there's also a notification light that comes out from inside the power button. So that's quite a cool design feature. The phone also has a dedicated Google Assistant button, which I don't really care for, and I really wish you could remap it to something else that you would use. The screen, on the other hand, is good enough, I guess. If you're a pixel peeper, you probably might not be very happy that it's a large 6.5 inch display with a resolution of HD+, but for most people it's more than okay. It gets bright enough to be very usable outdoors under bright sunlight. The bezels are quite small around the edges of the screen. The contrast levels are quite high, so the blacks look quite black and the colors are actually quite nice. To be honest with you, I don't really have the best eyes and when I was watching YouTube or Netflix, the screen resolution didn't really bother me. For most people, unless you look really close to the screen and it's like literally very close to your face, you might not even notice the low resolution. The thing you'll notice though about resolution is that Android is optimized in such a way that basically leaves very big gaps between rows of icons on your home screen which aren't usually found on higher resolution displays. There is also a very slight color shift when you look at the display from certain angles. I'm happy to report that the speaker performance is actually quite good. It's quite loud. It will do a very good job for you overall. And the phone's haptic feedback engine is also quite good. So most affordable phones and budget-friendly phones usually don't pay any attention to this. So you might end up with a very finicky vibration motor but the one on the 5.3 actually feels quite good to use. The fingerprint reader on the back of the device is just okay. It takes about a second for it to unlock. Not the worst I've used, but not the best either. So the Nokia 5.3 is running on Android 10 and it's a part of the Android One program, which in theory means that it should be updated for two new iterations of Android after Android 10. Based on Nokia's track record of updates, I do believe that it will definitely be updated for the next two years. What does worry me though, is that they don't have the best history when it comes to optimizing the software. So that might be an issue in the future. So for those of you who don't know, Android One is basically a very raw version of Android mainly exactly how Google intended Android to look like. So it doesn't have a lot of customization, but you can customize it any way that you actually want. So it's like a blank slate of Android that you add exactly what you want on top of it. Some people will like that because they're given the opportunity to do whatever they want without any bloatware from the manufacturer. And some people might miss certain features found on other phones. For me, to be honest, I don't mind it. The good news though, is that the phone is running on the Snapdragon 665, which makes the phone feel about 70% as fast as a flagship device, which is great. The GPU, which is the Adreno 610, is also a very capable GPU, which allows you to play intensive games on this phone. So I would say I've had no complaints using the Nokia 5.3 based on its performance. And I could easily see myself using this as a daily driver. 
It's not all perfect though, as sometimes you might notice some animation stuttering, especially when you're scrolling between screens. To me, it's not really a big deal, but it's something I did notice and something that might bother some of you. And my conclusion is that Android has reached a point where four gigabytes of RAM is the absolute minimum requirement to be able to run it smoothly, which is really crazy when you think about it. So this phone has four cameras on its back. You have the main 13 megapixel camera with an f1.8 aperture. You also have an ultra wide camera, which is five megapixels. And then you have two small cameras. One is for the macro and one is for depth sensing, which is just basically for the bokeh effect and being able to control the bokeh effect after images are taken. The good news is all three cameras that you can capture pictures with actually do a very good job when there is good lighting. So in daylight, I was very happy with how well the ultra wide camera did and the main camera is the best of them when it comes to details. It's a very, very usable camera. And I would say it's more aimed towards users who are into social media than photographers who want to enlarge pictures and you know, look at their pictures on their laptop screen. I was also quite happy with the depth sensor because being able to control the bokeh after the image is taken is quite cool. It adds this creative touch that you don't usually have in this price point. And it actually does a very good job separating the objects from the surroundings and the backgrounds. When it comes to low light, on the other hand, honestly, the only camera that's actually usable is the main 13 megapixel camera. The other cameras just completely struggle when it comes to trying to find enough light. And for me, the ultra wide camera, even though I love it, and I love having it as it adds this versatility that you don't usually find. It's just not very usable when there is not enough good light and you end up with a very noisy image and very blurred uh, edges of the image. The 13 megapixel camera has night mode and it works actually quite well. I mean, you take the picture, it manages to gather good enough light don't expect the same level of magic that you find on an expensive device like the Huawei P30 or P40 Pro, for example. It's not this sort of night mode, but when there is a bit of light that it can use, it can manage to capture details that usually wouldn't without night mode. So I've ended up using night mode almost every time I capture an image with low light. Uh, I don't usually take a lot of selfies, but the front camera, which is eight megapixels, actually does a good job. Uh, it also has portrait mode and the separation level is quite good, you know, adding the blur effects after. It's quite decent and you also have a lot of options for beauty mode and so on. So if you're into that sort of thing, you'll be happy with the front camera. The dynamic range, on the other hand, is a bit lacking. So if you have a very bright uh, background behind you, the phone might struggle making you look bright enough for the image. So one of my absolute favorite features of the Nokia 5.3 is its battery life. So it has a 4000 milliamp battery, which is a very decent size. And uh, since the display isn't very high resolution and the processor is quite energy efficient, you'll be easily able to live with about one day of battery life, even with very, very heavy usage. And if you're not a very heavy user, you could easily live with about two days of battery life. So to give you a rough idea, I managed to get between eight and nine hours of screen usage on this. And I was trying my best to kill it within one day and I almost never managed to succeed. So if battery life is something that you really care about, you'll be very happy with the 5.3. Look, it's very easy to find something to complain about with the 5.3. Maybe you want a higher resolution display that's an OLED. Maybe you want a different version of Android that has more customization options. And maybe you want it to be slightly cheaper because of Chinese phone X or Y. But the truth of the matter is, it's honestly an excellent daily driver. The combination of high quality materials, very good performance and a superb battery life, as well as a very good price, makes it a very easy recommendation for me to anybody who's looking to buy a phone within this price range. The camera versatility for me is just the cherry on top of a smartphone that makes compromises in all the right places. So what do you guys think about the Nokia 5.3? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think it makes the right compromises for you and what you're looking for? Also, if you have any questions regarding the phone, also let me know. I'm more than happy to answer all your questions. 
You can also watch my 5.3 unboxing video or my ultra detailed pure view comparison for all the best Nokia devices. So thank you all very much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.